Chapter Two of the Hoosier Schoolmaster by Edward Eggleston. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bridget Gage. Chapter Two: A Spell Coming. There was a moment of utter stillness, but the magnetism of Ralph's eye was too much for Bill Means. The request was so polite, the master's look was so innocent and yet so determined. Bill often wondered afterward that he had not fit rather than obeyed the request. But somehow he put the dog out. He was partly surprised, partly inveighed, partly awed into doing just what he had not intended to do. In the week that followed, Bill had to fight half a dozen boys for calling him Puppy Means. Bill said he wished he'd licked the master on the spot. Twould a saved five fights out of the six. And all that day and the next, the bulldog in the master's eye was a terror to evildoers. At the close of school on the second day, Bud was heard to give it as his opinion that the master wouldn't be much in a tussle, but he had a heap of thunder and lightning in him. Did he inflict corporal punishment? inquires some philanthropic friend. Would you inflict corporal punishment if you were tiger trainer in Van Amberg's happy family? But poor Ralph could never satisfy his constituency in this regard. Don't believe he'll do, was Mr. Pete Jones's comment to Mr. Means. Don't thrash enough. Boys won't larn less you thrash em, says I. Leastways, mine won't. Lay it on good is what I says to a master. Lay it on good. Don't do no harm. Lickin' and larnin' goes together. No lickin', no larnin', says I. Lickin' and larnin', lickin' and larnin' is the good old way. And Mr. Jones, like some wiser people, was the more pleased with his formula that it had an alliterative sound. Nevertheless, Rolf was master from this time until the spelling school came. If only it had not been for that spelling school. Many and many a time after the night of the fatal spelling school, Rolf used to say, If only it had not been for that spelling school. There had to be a spelling school, not only for the sake of my story, which would not have been worth the telling if the spelling school had not taken place, but because Flat Creek District had to have a spelling school. It is the only public literary exercise known in Hoopole County. It takes the place of Lyceum Lecture and Debating Club. Sis Means, or as she wished now to be called, Mirandy Means, expressed herself most positively in favor of it. She said that she lowed the folks in that district couldn't in no wise do without it. But it was rather to its social than to its intellectual benefits that she referred for all the spelling schools ever seen could not enable her to stand anywhere but at the foot of the class. There is one branch diligently taught in a backwoods school. The public mind seems impressed with the difficulties of English orthography, and there is a solemn conviction that the chief end of man is to learn to spell. No Webster's Elementary came down from heaven would be the backwoods version of the Greek saying, but that, unfortunately for the Greeks, their fame has not reached so far. It often happens that the pupil does not know the meaning of a single word in the lesson. This is of no consequence. What do you want to know the meaning of a word for? Words were made to be spelled, and men were probably created that they might spell them. Hence the necessity for sending a pupil through the spelling book five times before you allow him to begin to read, or indeed to do anything else. Hence the necessity for those long spelling classes at the close of each forenoon and afternoon session of the school to stand at the head of which is the cherished ambition of every scholar. Hence, too, the necessity for devoting the whole of the afternoon session of each Friday to a spelling match. In fact, spelling is the national game in Hoople County. Baseball and croquet matches are as unknown as Olympian chariot races. Spelling and shucking are the only public competitions. So the fatal spelling school had to be appointed for the Wednesday of the second week of the session just when Ralph felt himself master of the situation. Not that he was without his annoyances. One of Ralph's troubles in the week before the spelling school was that he was loved, the other that he was hated, and while the time between the appointing of the spelling tournament and the actual occurrence of that remarkable event is engaged in elapsing, let me narrate two incidents that made it for Ralph a trying time. End of chapter 2